For those of you that saw our Colnago V5 RS review, you might remember when I spun the cranks, definitely suboptimal performance. Well, before I get out and ride it, I'm not putting up with that. I'm gonna fix that bottom bracket and I'm gonna show you what we discover along the way. Let's get into it. So you might remember from the video that we faced off this bottom bracket because there was some paint overspray on it. I don't think I did a great job. I'll explain that in a second. We also fitted the Shimano Dura Ace BSA bottom brackets because they were the lightest, not because they were necessarily the best solution. These have a very, very narrow lip here which is going to suit because you can see there is very little frame material now in the video i did say this isn't the best solution for this bike remember the design brief was it to be a hyper light hyper stiff bike and you can't get lighter than having nothing at all so even adding in some threads is adding in weight that doesn't necessarily need to be there especially when you add all the weight of all these aluminium carriers to the bearings there also there's a potential point of failure here as well because you're now bonding in an aluminium piece onto a carbon frame and as we know aluminium and carbon are not great bedfellows they tend to corrode i'm going to show you a clip just here of what happens to your frame when that happens as you can see it just completely debonds and now you're in a real mess there's a th so probably three ways that this can be built. One, you could just get two aluminium threads, bond them in, put them on a jig, hope for the best while the glue cures. Two, you could have some sort of carrier. So at least you've got some sort of idea of alignment. Maybe it's a plastic carrier or on wax that you can then remove afterwards. Or you could have an entire aluminium tube that you can either leave in there to guarantee the alignment throughout the duration of the frame or go in there and machine out. Now that would be expensive. I've got no idea how Carl Nargo made this or actually how any other brands that are doing this single-sided bonding threads do it either. But anyway, we're by the by. My biggest concern with this is one, the paint over spray is a little bit of a tricky situation. And two, we have very little material here to work with. Dura-Ace ones, fine. But even if you look at a Altegra bottom bracket, remember these are slightly bigger. This is the tool to undo a Dura-Ace one, a bit smaller tool. And for doing the Altegra, you need a bigger tool again. So, and if I just grab the old verniers there, you can see an Altegra has 40.5 diameter and the Dura Ace one is 39. So a millimeter and a half less on here. And this is what we have got to work with, 3.1 millimeters. So to highlight this issue, couple of other options here. One, I've got a Hambini SRI. This actually has a external of 44. We also have a Bicconi bottom bracket, which is almost similar di uh, dimensions to the SRAM. Uh, if you're trying to get a fit BSA, this is also 44. So if you're looking for something more compatible, that's a problem too. And if you want to fit like a 30 millimeter bearing, let's say you want to fit something really fancy like a THM crank set with a 30 millimeter angle, you're gonna to need to fit a bottom bracket solution like that, where you can fit a properly big 6806 bearing in there. And these get really quite big. These are like 48 millimeters. Now, if I thread this into here, you'll see a couple of the problems. You see this big lip here, this edge now becomes our fulcrum, our lever, if you like. So when we're pedaling, all of the weight of that bearing now goes onto here. We've created a lever effect to essentially lever out those threads Plus it looks really, really ugly on a lightweight race frame like this. Can you imagine getting your lovely lightweight THM 30 millimeter cranks or your SRAM red dub and you've got a bottom bracket like this sticking out over your frame? Not cool. Anyway, while this is in here, I could also take my feeler gauges and have a better idea of where our gaps are. So I had this set to 0 0.4. You see we are tight here, but coming up here, I've got big gap here, big gaps all the way around here. So we are tight on this edge on this side. I think in that original video, I didn't actually remove enough material and look closer. I can tell I've still left a blob of paint just here. So the other problem, and it's not completely limited to this frame, is the Seabree crank set. This should be a 24 millimeter shell. And one simple test I can do is, is it actually just a good fit with those Dura Ace bearings? And you can see how tight that is to get on. It does go, but it is, it is tight. Shimano Dura Ace crank set and bearings, look how easy that went on and spins significantly better. Now, you don't need a micrometer to tell you there's some sort of intolerance going on there, but I do have a micrometer, so let's find out. Now, 
these are pretty hard to measure. You need to find a consistent place. Now this should be just a smidge under 24 millimeters. We are there 23.98. So perfect, that's what it should be. And the Seabree ones, we are 23.94. I also notice a little bit of, ta of a taper on these because right at the bottom here, we are actually at 24 dead. That'll explain why this is a tight fit. Question is, what do we do about it? Well, I'm not about to start machining this or about to start machining this. However, there are other bottom brackets on the market which have different levels of tolerance. So if we take a look at the Hambini, the SRI bottom bracket, this just has a Delrin top cap designed to have some sort of compliance. And that is a better fit and a better spin However, this has such a large edge, not massively happy about using that. There is the Bacconi, uh, which should hope work because they also sponsor the UAE Emirates team and make a nice bottom bracket solution as well. Now, and this one actually has a little rubber O-ring in there sort of to help with compliance. And that is oh, actually quite a nice fit. It probably has the best spin. So I think what we'll be doing is fitting this, which only has a contact patch here of 40 millimeters. So I think we'll get away with this, but I do want to have another look at the facing of that, see if we can get it a little bit nicer. Right, let's get cracking. This edge here that we're expecting to see material come from. We are only removing paint here, really. So not got this tight. It shouldn't be removing any carbon or anything else. This is just paint coming off and you'll know exactly when you start removing carbon because it will feel different as instantly, it will feel different in your hand. The second that you move from paint to cutting into something else, you'll feel it. So the one issue with this type of bottom bracket is because you've got all these slopes away, it's hard to know whether you're actually hitting a, an actual flat surface or part where the frame floats away. So let's get the bottom bracket back on there and, and try it. This top bit, like I was trying to explain in the video, because where the frame slopes over, this is always going to be a loose fit, sadly, but we can definitely improve the fit down there. In fact, you can see now these marks. So this is going out to 44 millimeters from here, and you can see where the frame isn't actually part of the bottom bracket. So you'll never get a good supportive edge from these parts here because the frame literally just slopes away. All right, so this is a construction grease. So it's designed to stop the galling of threads and to stop corrosion. It's not a lubricant. And using a brush like this means we get deep into the threads. When you're fitting these sort of two piece sections, it's really good to make sure you don't screw everything in one side and then the other, sort of screw them in together. The other thing is, is your threads should be like this. If your threads don't feel like this, you need to go and get them chased because you want to make sure that when you use a torque wrench on this, is that you are actually measuring tightening torque, not just go against the friction of the threads. So these Bacconi bottom brackets, they might look like they use a funky tool, but they actually just use the standard Shimano Dior. Yep, there's actually three different tools for BSA. Well, actually there's four. So all of you massive fans of BSA, remember you have Dura Ace and XTR, you have Altegra and XT, and you have Dior, and you have GXP. So there's four different tools for BSA. Great fun. Now, one of the other issues with this CB crank is that it has a bearing preload on one side, like you were familiar with on the SRAM cranks and they're not particularly generous. So with that Shimano Dura Ace, I was literally, I don't know, a quarter of a turn of preload. So you haven't got a lot to play with. So if the bottom bracket shell was over a little bit like it was, it was like 68 point something that I measured before I did all the facing work. It's gonna be a little bit on the tight side. So this should hopefully squeeze through a whole lot better instantly. So much better. Before we get too excited on this amazing spin, let's just bring this preload up. Yeah, I mean, there's probably, what's that, about a quarter of a turn on that preload ring. That's more like it. There we go. That was the last thing that was bugging me about this amazing bike. Remember, you can win this bike. Yes, we have put it up for raffle. All the details were in the video that we did about its whole build spec. It is an incredible build. We're talking Lewis SLR brakes. There's obviously the Seabre cranks, Erie Research, Genus Wheels, super lightweight. The Celitalia Tektro SLR saddle. There's a whole load of special features on here. We even improved that Garmin mount as well to one that actually works and looks as nice as the rest of the bike. Two pound a ticket. All the links are below. We're running it through the website called Raffle, so all the rules and regulations all taken care of. I can't wait to give this away. It's still an amazing 
bike and all the proceeds for that are going to go into our crowdfunding project which goes towards funding our sort of community centric extension of our business so what an exciting opportunity to own an absolutely outstanding race winning bike now one final thing remains and that is the ride test that is coming i need to pop over to mallorca to ride the 312 i'll be ride testing this as soon as i get back telling you what i think about how it rides and handles and i cannot wait i want to see if it corners like a rocket like David Arthur says. If you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.